Hello and welcome. Now in this video, what we are going to do is we are going to install WordPress on our hosting and domain. Now in some cases, when you purchase hosting, you are going to find that there are companies that will give you hosting that is specifically made for WordPress. And so the process is going to be very easy to get your site installed. And in other cases, you're going to have a more traditional situation. And you're going to get access to something called a control panel or cPanel. But when you have WordPress hosting, it's pretty much going to be as simple as going into your site and then getting into the buttons or the wizard that the company gives you. It's quite possible that you could have a more traditional situation and you will need to go into the control panel. And that's what we're going to do right now since that's the more difficult of the two. We are now inside of our hosting control panel and what we're going to do is we're going to go to an area called Fantastico. And we're going inside of Fantastico because that's where the one step install is going to be for WordPress. Once we're inside of Fantastico, we're going to find the section for blogs and we're going to open it up. Then we're going to find the section for WordPress and we're going to go to that link. What we're going to do is we're going to click this button that says install a new copy. And when it says 4.6, it means WordPress. We're going to go ahead and click that button. Now, when we get inside, what we're going to have to do is choose a directory. Now, we can choose to put it in the root directory. In other words, we want the WordPress site to take up one entire domain. And so we would then leave this space blank. If we're going to have yourdomain.com and that whole domain is going to be taken by the WordPress site, we're going to leave this blank. But if we want to put WordPress in a subdirectory, we can do that. And in this particular case, that's what we're going to do. So we're going to put in a subdirectory name to actually put our WordPress site in. All right, so we're going to write in test directory because that's the directory where we're going to put our WordPress site. And that's where we're going to be working with it. Now, you're going to need to give yourself an administrative name, a password, an email. And this email is going to be the place where WordPress will send all of the email concerning your site. And uh, we're going to give our site a title. And of course, you don't have to worry if you uh, don't know what you want to title your, your website. You'll be able to change it later. And we'll talk about that. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and write this information in. And then we're going to click Submit. Okay, so Fantastico will give you the information. Now the password here is blurred out. What you're going to do then is you're going to visit your website. You can do that by going to this link under the back end. That's going to take you where you can actually log into your website and start working on it. Okay, you're going to put in your username and password and then you're going to click log in. And once you've done that, then you have installed your WordPress site on your domain or wherever it is that you are going to want to use it for your network marketing business. Now, in the next video, we'll start by talking about the things that you'll need to do to turn your site into your home base for your brand. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now in this video, we're going to go through three things to make your site instantly unique to brand your business. We are now looking at the outside of our site and what we're going to do is we're going to go back into the dashboard area. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to change the menus. And we're going to do that by going to the appearance and we're going to go to this link that says menus. Now you're going to notice that our site has four topics across the top menu. And what we want to do is we want to customize that. We want to change that to something that our team is going to find more approachable. So as we're inside of the menu area, what we're going to do is we're going to change some of these categories. So for example, we're going to change this to from about to about team victory. We're going to change the blog category to the team victory diaries. Or journal and we're going to change the contact information and we're actually going to remove this and we'll talk about this a little bit more as we get to that section about our contact page we're going to add in a custom link instead and so we're going to create a custom link and we're going to place that in the menu 
So once we've done that, we're going to click Add to Menu. And we're actually going to move this up. Once we've done that, then we're going to click Save Menu. And then we'll go back and take a look and see what our menu looks like now. And you'll see now that we have fully customized our menu. We now want to customize what our team sees when they come to our site. So we're going to go to the Customize button. We're going to go to the Header Media. And you're going to notice a couple of things here. Now, this header media is actually going to be this image. And we can change this image. So we can change this to something else. Now, the thing that we want to recognize is that the image needs to be of a certain size. It needs to be 2,000 by 1,200 pixels. However, we can go one step further and we can actually add a video. And it can be something that really reflects who our team is. It can be a video of our team or something that we have done where we have actually been celebrating some of the victories that we've had or a live event or something that we want people to see when they come to the site. So we're just going to go to YouTube and get a URL. And we can find any URL. We can grab the link address and we can come back and actually add that URL in this section. Once we have it there, then we click Save and Publish. And now this will be the image of this video that people will see when they actually come to the site. And while the video is loading, it's going to show the header image. So this is a great way for us to customize our site right away. Now the third area that we can actually go and customize our site it's going to be in the categories area. And one of the things you're going to notice is that there's going to be one general category that all of our posts are going to go into. And so what we want to do right away is we want to rename that uncategorized area to something that is recognizable to us. So we're going to call that Team Victory. So that the default category for all of our posts are going to be Team Victory. We go back to categories and of course we can definitely add more categories but we've changed this from uncategorized now to team victory and so we'll see the same thing if we go to the settings area and we go to the writing tab and we'll notice that the default post category is going to be team victory okay so with that thanks and I will see you in another video Welcome back. Now in this video, we're going to go through three things to make your site instantly unique to brand your business. We are now looking at the outside of our site and what we're going to do is we're going to go back into the dashboard area. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to change the menus. And we're going to do that by going to the appearance and we're going to go to this link that says menus. Now you're going to notice that our site has four topics across the top menu. And what we want to do is we want to customize that. We want to change that to something that our team is going to find more approachable. So as we're inside of the menu area, what we're going to do is we're going to change some of these categories. So for example, we're going to change this to from about to about team victory. We're going to change the blog category to the Team Victory Diaries or Journal. And we're going to change the contact information. And we're actually going to remove this. And we'll talk about this a little bit more as we get to that section about our contact page. We're going to add in a custom link instead. And so we're going to create a custom link and we're going to place that in the menu. So once we've done that, we're going to click Add to Menu and we're actually going to move this up. Once we've done that, then we're going to click Save Menu. And then we'll go back and take a look and see what our menu looks like now. And you'll see now that we have fully customized our menu. 
we now want to customize what our team sees when they come to our site. So we're going to go to the customize button. We're going to go to the header media. And you're going to notice a couple of things here. Now this header media is actually going to be this image. And we can change this image. So we can change this to something else. Now the thing that we want to recognize is that the image needs to be of a certain size. It needs to be 2000 by 1200 pixels. However, we can go one step further and we can actually add a video. That video can have a URL on YouTube and it can be something that really reflects who our team is. It can be a video of our team or something that we have done where we have actually been celebrating some of the victories that we've had or a live event or something that we want people to see when they come to the site. So we're just going to go to YouTube and get a URL. And we can find any URL. We can grab the link address and we can come back and actually add that URL in this section. Once we have it there, then we click Save and Publish. And now this will be the image of this video that people will see when they actually come to the site. But while the video is loading, it's going to show the header image. So this is a great way for us to customize our site right away. Now the third area that we can actually go and customize our site is going to be in the categories area. And one of the things you're going to notice is that there's going to be one general category that all of our posts are going to go into. And so what we want to do right away is we want to rename that uncategorized area to something that is recognizable to us. So we're going to call that Team Victory so that the default category for all of our posts are going to be Team Victory. We go back to categories and of course we can definitely add more categories but we've changed this from uncategorized now to Team Victory. And so we'll see the same thing if we go to the settings area and we go to the writing tab. And we'll notice that the default post category is going to be Team Victory. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, in this video, we're going to be going over setting up your site to promote product offers. You are now looking at the ClickBank Marketplace, and this is one of the locations where you'd be able to find affiliate products to promote to your team members or to prospects or to people who are not quite ready to purchase anything in your opportunity. So what you can do is you can actually go and get the affiliate link from this platform and if you click the promote button on any of the offers, they're going to ask you for your account nickname. Now you'll need to have set this up ahead of time. What we're going to do is we're going to write in an account nickname and then what we're going to do is we're going to click the create button. We'll then be given a long unique link. Now this link is not going to look good if we're going to give this or present this to our team. So what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to use it with our team on our site, but we want to make sure that it's branded from our site. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do something inside of our site that will help us to brand our affiliate products. And we're going to do that through a plugin. And we're going to go to the installed plugins, or actually we're going to add a new plugin. And we're going to write in the keyword here. I'm going to write in affiliate link cloaking. And we can install the site Pretty Link Lite. And this will allow us to hide that long, ugly link. All you'll need to do is you'll need to click the Install Now button. Once you've done that, then you'll need to activate. Now, there is a pro version that you can actually use, but the version with just the light version will help us just fine. So what we're going to do is we're going to click Add New Link. And we're going to put in the URL that we just picked up from ClickBank. We're going to paste it in there. And then we're going to write in the link that we want it to be. So in this particular case, we're going to write in networking. We're going to give it an internal title. And then we're going to click create. And then when we get ready to use the link on our site, all we have to do is to go and grab this link copy it to the clickboard and now our site is ready to promote affiliate offers. 
Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, in this video, we're going to be discussing setting up our opt-in form on our site. You are now looking at Get Response, and we're going to start the process by going to the Forms area and creating a form. And we're going to pick one of the templates that we believe best reflects what we want to say to the people who are going to be coming to our site. And we're going to use this template. Now what we're going to do is we're going to click Save and Publish. And then you'll notice that we have some JavaScript code that GetResponse gives us. And we're going to do, we're going to copy that code. And then we're going to come back to our site. And what we're going to do is we're going to go into the Appearance. And we're going to go to the Widgets area. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to pick up the text box. And we're going to drag that into our sidebar. We're going to place our JavaScript code in this area. And we're going to give this a title. And then we're going to click Save. And then we're going to click Close. Now what we've effectively done is we've now made that widget available throughout our site anytime someone reads any of our posts. So now what's going to happen is every time someone gets to a post of our content, they're actually going to have the opportunity to opt into our site. So let's take a look to see how it's actually going to look. Now you'll notice here that we have some content and right here on our post is our opt-in form for, for our visitors to be able to give us their name and email address. So now one thing that we may want to do is we may want to make sure that this appears above the fold and in the top. So we're going to go back to the widget area and we're going to move some things around so that this opt-in form will be prominent when people come to the site. So we're going to come back to this area and we're going to go back to the widgets. And we're going to notice that there are a couple of things here. And what we want to do is we just want to slide this to the very top. And we may even want to take something out. Maybe we don't want a search box in. And maybe we don't even want the find us in. So we'll take that out. So now what we're going to do is we're going to now take a look to see what our site actually looks like. And now you see our post and our opt-in box showing up as soon as someone comes into the site. And so we can actually place our list building efforts at the very top of our site whenever someone comes to any of our posts. Now you're looking at a sample page and it's important to note that this widget will not appear on our pages but only in our posts and it will appear in all of the posts. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, in this video, we're going to be talking about setting up a joint venture. You're now looking at the back office of our website, and we're now going to set the website up for more than one person to be able to post, as well as more than one person to be able to operate the site. We're going to do that by going to the users area, and you're going to see that we are the only user. Now, one thing they're going to do right away is we're going to make this username and the name that people are going to see on the site to be something unique. So we're going to edit this and we're going to go here and click edit. And we're going to then change the name that's going to be displayed publicly. And so we're going to change this to, and then we're going to click save. We're going to come back and then we're going to display the name publicly in that way. And we're going to come back and update the profile again. Now all the posts that we are involved in are going to say this name or whatever name that we designate that's going to be here where we say display name publicly. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add in the people that are going to be jointly operating the site with us. We're going to do that by going to add a new person. And we're going to give that person a username and we're going to write in all the information and then send it out to them. 
Now, as we're setting up the account, what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that the user is going to be sent their email about their password and logging in. Now, that's not the most important thing. The most important thing for us to determine is going to be the person's role. Now, if the person is actually going to run the site with us and they're going to be in charge of making some of the decisions, you may want to make them an administrator. That will give them the ability to bring people on or take people out. If they're going to have that level of authority and level of decision making. You want to make them an administrator. Now, if you're talking about someone who's going to be posting primarily and who's going to be operating the blog and they're going to be creating content, then you want to make them someone other than an administrator. And if you want to give them charge over some of the other content, then you can make them an editor. However, you just want them to be a contributor. All you're going to do is give them access to be able to post, then you can make them just a contributor or an author. So once you've determined that person's role, you're going to click add new user. And once you've created the new user, anytime you want to change it, you go back, you can edit, and then you can change their role. Or you can even change what they are going to appear as when they post. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, in this video, we are going to be discussing setting up an affiliate opportunity. You are now looking at the affiliate area for AWeber, an autoresponder company. And the reason that we've come to AWeber is because they have several different kinds of ads for their affiliate program. And one of the things that you will notice if you go into the ads area is that they have video ads, they have badges and banner ads. Now, both of these kinds of ads are going to require us to be able to use a code, and we're going to take that code and place it inside of our WordPress site. So in this particular case, we're going to first take a look at the video ads. And what you're going to notice is that there is code, and that this code is someplace where we can put on our site and someone can click a link and play a video. Now, there are several ways for us to be able to display this content. One way for us to display the content is inside of a post. And you'll see that we have clicked add new post here. And what we're going to do is we're going to click the side that says text. And this will allow us to put HTML code in this area so that we would be able to display some kind of code or some kind of website application. So we're going to give our post a title first. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go back and we're going to get all of this code and we're going to come back to this area and we're going to paste the code right in here now one of the things that you can do very easily even if you don't know a lot of HTML code is you can place a center code in the post and in order to do that all you'll have to do is to put a caret and right center and then put an encode in the very same way. Now once we have all of this information in place, we have our code in place, we can hit the publish button and this will then become a post on our site. Once the post is made live, what we can do is we can actually take a look at this post to see what our customers are going to see. And you'll notice here there is our post and then there is the code and it really looks like there's a video that can be played right inside of the post and indeed that it can Email marketing is not... so this is a great way of being able to set up your affiliate opportunities inside of a post now one of the other things that we can do is we can do the very same thing that we did with our autoresponder code is we can put code in our widgets so that it will appear on all of our pages. So in order to do that, all we need to do is to go back to this area and find our widgets. And then we can actually take another text box and we get to that text box. All we've got to do is put our code in this area again. We'll click save, close, and then we'll go back and take a look to see what our page is going to look like. And what you'll notice here when we come back to the post is that now 
this box is going to appear in all of our posts. So whenever we want to set up an affiliate opportunity, we can either set it up inside of a post area or we can set it up inside of a widget to appear in all of our content. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, in this video, we're going to be creating pages and posts. You are now looking at an article that has been written and formatted in Microsoft Word. And what we want to do now is we want to take that article that we've written and we want to place it or post it inside of our WordPress site. Now, you can actually do the writing ahead of time in Microsoft Word or your favorite word processing software, and then you'll have a document that looks something like this. Now, what we need to do before we start moving this content over to WordPress, we want to take out all of the code that might be in it. And the way that we do that is we're going to move all of this into a text document first. And all we'll need to do is we'll need to select all We'll control C and copy it, and then we will cut and paste this content into a text document. So now we have our content into a text document. There is no more code involved. And so what we can do now is we can now copy all of this code. We can really just go and select it all and then copy it. We're going to come back to our WordPress document and we'll decide on whether or not we want to use a post or a page. So we're going to start by doing a post. So we're going to click Add New, and we're going to give our post a title. Now, we actually copied that content in there already. So we're going to take this content. We're going to cut it, and we're going to put the title here. Now, the WordPress editor works for the most part like any other editor. We can take out some of the space. And then we have some reasonable confidence that our article is going to appear in this way. Now, there are some other things that we can do with this content before we finalize it. In order to do that, we want to go over to the visual editor. And in order to go over to the visual editor, we're just going to click this link. And we'll get a sense for how our article is actually going to look. Now, one of the things that we can do in order to keep our content uniform when we post any time inside of our WordPress document is to work with things like subtitles. And we can do that by highlighting the subtitle and making the change in this area. We could typically use one of the headings to make it easy to be consistent in our post. So in this particular case, we're going to change this to Heading 4. We're going to change all of the subtitles to he Heading 4. Now, in some cases, when we are doing a post, we are going to want to hyperlink some of the content in it. And in order to do that in WordPress, it is very easy to do. All we'll need to do is to go and highlight the actual content that we want to hyperlink. Then we'll click the link. And then we'll place the URL to the clickable link that we want it to be. And we'll click the arrow. And we can do that for any of the content throughout our document. Now, one other important thing that we can do with this content is that we can actually place an image inside of the text. And we can do that by placing the cursor where we want the image to be. And then we can then click Add Media because we're literally going to insert an image. Now, if we didn't have the image that we wanted to insert, we would click Upload Files. And then we're going to find a file on our hard drive. Okay, once we have the file in our hard drive, we'll import it into our document. And what you're going to notice is that this photo doesn't quite look the way we would want it to look. And so we can actually go in and change some of these settings. And we can do so so that our text will actually align with our image. 
and we can actually have it aligned to the left and we can update it and then our text will wrap around that image as well as the title and then once we have completed the post all we would have to do is click publish once we've done that then we can actually go and review our post and our content is in place along with our widgets now one of the things that you'll notice is that this post was placed in our team victory category now what we can do is when we start to come up with new posts and new categories for our team we can actually then start to place new information here and we can create a new category by writing it in actually inside of our post so we can create a category that's called events and then all we'll need to do is to click add new category once we do that then we can take this out and then we're going to click update for our post now one thing that you'll notice right away is that our URL has changed and our URL now reflects the fact that this post is now in the events category and this is what you will want to do as you post you want to make sure that you are putting your post into the right category or at least the ones that you desire to have them in okay so with that thanks and I will see you in another video welcome back you are now looking at the pages area and the paging system is very close to the post system in terms of how we present information now we're looking at this page because you will need to know that pages when they're set up are either set up as child pages or they're set up as parent pages now everything that you see here is not set up as a child page meaning WordPress treats this as a category all by itself now when we create a page we can create a page that is a child of any of these pages or we can set it up so that it is a parent page like all the rest so we're going to go ahead and we're going to start by clicking the add new button we're going to place our content into our post we're going to get rid of some of this noise I'm going to switch over to the visual editor I'm going to make this again we're going to do something with our subtitles and we're going to hyperlink some of the information now if you look to the right hand side what you're going to notice is that we can determine that this can either be a parent page or it can be a child page or we can determine what the parent page is and you'll see all those pages before so we want to make this a child page of the about category we can do that and when we click publish we'll actually see it so let's go ahead and click publish and now let's go back to the all pages area and if you'll notice that page is now treated as if it is a child page of the about section so what we want to do now is take a look at the URL and what you'll notice is that it's considered to be a child page so you'll notice that there is the about section and now there is our page name so you want to take note of how the URL is going to appear when you actually do your pages in that way now there's one other aspect to our post that we'll need to take a look at and what we can do is we can actually set a featured image that's going to appear at the top of our content and so we can go and click this link and we can feature our content now it's not going to appear inside of the text as we did before it's going to appear on top so what we're going to do is we're going to click update and now we're going to take a look at our page and you can see now that our page features the image at the top so this is another alternative for you as you consider how you want your content to appear on your pages okay so with that thanks and I will see you in another video welcome back now in this video we're going to be discussing changing the theme 
You are now looking at your WordPress dashboard and we have been using one particular theme. And so as we go back to the appearance area and go to the themes section, you're going to notice that WordPress comes installed with three different kinds of theming elements. Now there are a couple of things that you can do. You can actually go and look for other themes and you can do that by going to click the add new button and WordPress will give you some options as to other themes that you can add to WordPress. Now these themes are actually going to be free to you and they may indeed require some but for the most part you'll be able to get these themes and use them as part of your marketing efforts if you're willing to make some changes. And as you progress, you can actually go and purchase a theme that is closer to what you want. But as you just get started, you will be able to pick from these themes and implement them into your WordPress website. So in this particular case, let's use one of these themes. And all we'll need to do is to click the install button. We can preview the site and see what it's going to look like. We can leave it, that'll take us back to the theming area, and we can try another one. And we can install, and then we can preview. And we can see if we like it or not. If we like it, we can choose to activate it. Now you'll notice now that our 2017 theme is no longer active, but this is our theme now. So if we go to our front page, our site's going to look different. Now what we can do is we can actually go back and we can change our theme back to the way that it was. And we do that by going back to our theme and then reactivating the theme that was there. Now in order to find other WordPress themes, what we can do is you can do a Google search and you can actually just type in WP or WordPress theme and you'll have some alternatives that you can look through. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, in this video, we're going to be talking about adding basic functions through WordPress. Now, you may run into situations where you are going to want to change some of the functionality inside of your WordPress site. And in order to do that, you are going to be looking to change some of the plugins. And to do that, you're going to go to your plugins area. And WordPress makes this very convenient to be able to do. And what you're going to do is you're going to start your search inside of WordPress. And you'll see that there is a keyword area right here. And what you can do is you can place the function that you're actually looking for. So, for example, you're trying to find some additional functionality so that you can add a forum. And so you might type in forum here. And WordPress will search for all of the plugins that can be used that will put a form onto your site. And so you can actually see reviews and what you can actually add to your WordPress site by clicking the install button. Maybe you're looking for an appointment calendar. And so you're going to type in appointment. And once again, you're going to see all of the functions that you can add to your WordPress site. Now, this is not necessarily going to change your entire site into this, but it will add it to your WordPress site. So the way that you change the functionality first is you're going to start within WordPress. Now, of course, you can go and you can search in Google, you can search in Yahoo, you can search in Bing to try to find it, but this is going to be the very best place for you to be able to start because you're going to be able to see the reviews. You can do the same thing with themes. You can click add new theme. And what you can do is you can actually use what's called the feature filter. And you can start to look for themes according to the parameters that you want. And so if you are looking for a theme with three columns and you're looking for something that has a custom header, then what you can do is you can actually apply these filters and WordPress will actually bring you back some of the themes that you will be able to use. Now, once again, all this does is change the basic look of your theme. If you want to change the functionality, you are going to want to use the plugins. 
Now, if you find that you've installed a plugin, well, let's go to the installed plugins area, and you are uncomfortable with what it is doing on your site, what you can do first is you can deactivate the plugin. And what that will do is that will take out anything that you've done with that plugin on your site. You can then go on to delete that plugin. And that will delete everything that you have done with that plugin. And it will also take the plugin out of your site. Now, in some cases, you will need to do this because your site may not do what you wanted to do once you've installed a plugin. And so one of the ways that you investigate is to go back and take out plugins that you have put in if your site was working correctly prior to your installing it. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, in this video, we're going to be discussing automating marketing processes in WordPress. You're now looking at the add plugin section of WordPress, where we're going to discuss a more advanced feature of WordPress and being able to add in not only plugins that will change the functionality, but also plugins that will increase your automation over services that you're using in conjunction with WordPress. So for example, in the very same way that we did a search for different functionality, we can actually search for some of the services that we use in order to integrate them into WordPress. So for example, if we were to start with a keyword of Aweber, we would find that there are a number of developers with highly rated plugins that use Aweber and integrate it into our WordPress site. A number of marketers use services like GoToWebinar. GoToWebinar also has plugin functionality that automates some of the processes inside of WordPress. Some marketers use the service IFTTT or If This Then That and there are a number of plugins that will integrate some of that functionality into, again, your WordPress site. The same is true for GetResponse and for ClickFunnels. You'll find processes for Amazon, for eBay, and for Google AdSense. So as you begin to use services on your WordPress blog, one of the things that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to check to find out if there's an integration plugin that will help you to be able to enact some of these things faster and more efficiently. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now in this video, we are going to set up your tracking systems inside of your WordPress site. You should now be comfortable with the plugin area. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take what we have learned and we're going to apply this to being able to set up our tracking with Google Analytics inside of our website. And so we can do that by going to the plugins area, typing in the keyword Google Analytics. And we're going to find a number of plugins available. So we're going to install this one. It says it's user friendly and has good reviews. Once it's installed, we're going to click activate. And now our plugin is active. So now what we're going to do is go to the left hand side menu. You'll see that we have the analytics plugin. And so what we're going to do is we're going to open up this area. We're going to need to give this plugin permission. And now what we're going to need to do is to go through the authentication process. We'll be asked to go to our Google Analytics account. We'll then be given an access code by Google. We're going to go ahead and paste that code in. We're going to do this off camera. And once we do that, then our code will be ready to add our tracking system to our site. And so for this plugin to work, what we're going to do is to write the name in of our property. And then we're going to click the add button. And once we go through the process, we will have then added Google Analytics to our WordPress site. And we will now be tracking visitors. We will now be tracking people that actually take action on our website. And we'll be able to look at the reports right inside of our WordPress dashboard, which is what we want. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now in this video, we're going to be discussing specialized themes and plugins. Now a WordPress theme can build in functionality to what it already does. 
but there are also specialty themes and plugins that will allow you to change the entire site. And this is important. As you notice, this website, this WordPress website is built in a directory. You could, if you wanted to, build several WordPress sites in several directories and have them all on one domain name. You could even have one main WordPress site on your main domain as well as building a satellite of sites around on your domain name. Now what will this do for you? Well this will allow you to have some specialty sites in some of the subdirectories. There is a free theme called BuddyPress that will allow you to take your WordPress site and turn it into a social network. Now there is also a paid series of themes from a company called Premium Press. And the reason that this is notable, showing you the themes from Premium Press will give you a picture of what WordPress is able to do and what you are able to do with a WordPress website if you want to change the entire nature of it. So for example, we will take a look at some of the themes within the Premium Press family. There are micro jobs themes that will turn your WordPress website into a site for people who are looking for small jobs like Fiverr and other outsourcing tasks. There are shopping themes. There are actually directory themes where you can have a site that will be a local directory. You can also have a dating theme. There are themes within Premium Press that will allow you to set up a download site. You can also set up a coupon site. You can set up a real estate site, as you can see. There are some video sharing sites which are entirely made just to share video. There are classified ad themes. There are auction themes. And then there are price comparison themes. All of these themes are part of the Premium Press family and they will change your WordPress website into something entirely different than something that you would just be using for posting. There are themes for car dealers to sell their cars. There are job board themes. And so basically what you have here is you have the ability or the capacity to change WordPress into something that will allow you to build a website for a specialized function. And once again, you don't have to worry about damaging the credibility you have on one particular site. If you can find a use for these different functions of a WordPress theme, you can build them into a separate directory. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video.